Young Show. Hello. It is generally believed that everyone has three characters. That which he exhibits, that which he has, and uh, that which he thinks he has. And now we take you back to the year 1890, near Washington Square in New York City. on your part. It's not a question of money, Mr. Van Dorf. I can work better in my studio, and I take pride in my work. Mm, yes, I know. That's precisely the reason I commissioned you to paint my daughter's portrait. It took a great deal of persuasion on my part. It's only because Madeline knows how much I wish it that she's finally consented. Well, that is refreshing to me. A young girl who doesn't want her portrait painted? My daughter is hardly a young girl, Mr. Curtis. She's a maiden lady. Well into our thirties. Shall we say tomorrow morning at ten for the first sitting? Good. But I would like to meet your daughter. You will. At ten tomorrow. Oh, I can find my way on, sir. If it's convenient for you, I'll have my material sent over this afternoon. Well, that'll be fine. Good day, sir. Good day, Mr. Curtis. My daughter. How do you do, Mr. Curtis? How do you do, Miss Van We chose this dress because it was her mother's favorite. And as a child, Madden always loved it. Didn't you, dear? Yes, Father. It's very beautiful. Yes, isn't it? Well, I'll let you get to work. Madeline, make Mr. Curtis feel at home. Oh, yes, Father. Very kind to set things up for me. You did everything but paint the portrait. Do you object to a pipe? No. Oh. You don't have to hold a pose, Miss Vanderhoek. Aren't you going to start to paint it after 10 o'clock? Not just yet. Let's chat for a while. I like to know a little about my subjects first. When I read your father's letter, I was a bit puzzled. Being born in New York, I was familiar with the Vanderhoffs, naturally. I asked around, but I never could find anyone who had met you. Who? Oh. Perhaps you've just returned to New York. Have you been away? No. Oh. And you don't care much to go out in society? Not much. It's a pity. Don't you find it lonely here? Oh? You have brothers, sisters? No. And you live alone here with your father? Yes. Oh, I see you have a talking machine. It belongs to my father. You must be very fond of opera. We enjoy it. Have you heard Lily Lehman at the Metropolitan? Oh, I'm afraid I'm not going to make a very good subject for you. Father says I'm not very good at conversation. Sometimes what one doesn't say is more revealing than what one does say. 
Let me ask you a full face. Father says it's to be a profile. Very well. But first, let's get some light in here. Oh, no. Father says his portrait is to be painted by gaslight. Gaslight? Yes. Well, that's ridiculous. I must have proper light to paint by. Oh, no, Mr. Curtis, please. Close the draperies. Father says they are not to be open. Please, Mr. Curtis, close them. Miss Vanderhoff, I must have light to see. Mr. Curtis, please, close the curtain. Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> All right. If you think this is there. Now I'm satisfied. You said you wanted to know me. Well, this is what I am. And this is why those drapies must never be opened. And this is why I never leave this house. <laughs> Isn't it, Mr. Curtis? No. You're simply a woman with a scar on her face. <laughs> and if you prefer to be painted by gaslight, it's quite agreeable with me. Yes. <laughs> Shall we get on with it? I think it might be more natural if we pose you reading a book. Let's see. Oh, this should do. Elizabeth Barrett Browning. This will make it easier for you. I do have a headache. Would you please excuse me for today? I'm sorry. Shall we say the same time tomorrow? Yes, thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Miss Campbell. My dear. Is the sitting over so soon? Yes, Father. Aren't you feeling well? I had no idea Mr. Curtis was so young. You must give him a chance. He has an excellent reputation. May I go now? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> you'd find Mrs. Browning rather sentimental. Well, good. I'm very sentimental. Please, right where I interrupted you. You must be tired. That'll be all for today. And we've gotten a great deal done these past weeks. Mr. Curtis? Yes? Would you like to stay and have luncheon with us? Why, thank you, Miss Vanderhoff. I'd like to very much. Oh. Father. Well, Madeline, aren't you going to change for luncheon? I, I, I just asked Miss Curtis to join us. Is it all right? Oh? Why, of course. Oh. Well, run along, run along. Yes, sure. Sherry? Please. I want to thank you. You've been very kind. Kind, sir? Yes. To my daughter. She's very charming. Thank you.
May I have the pleasure of this waltz, my lady? Sorry, Peter, I'm afraid I never learned how to waltz. Nonsense. Ladies were born to waltz. No, it's the gentlemen who have to be taught. Will you teach me? I'm afraid you'll find me very clumsy, I'm sorry. Oh, you needn't be. <laughs> That's right, the ladies usually hold their gowns. Oh. Yes, that's, that's right. Shall we? Right. And? <laughs> oh! Oh, oh I'd love to start that project all over again. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. I told you I was clumsy. I would love to start the portrait all over again. Why? Don't you like that one? I... Yes. But I wish you were smiling. May I do another with you smiling? Not in costume. Less formal. More you. I just came down for a book, Father. It's very beautiful. It looks just like her. I'm glad you're pleased, Father. It should please you also. He's made you very beautiful. Yes, he has. My dear Madeline, that's what he gets paid for. But he wants to paint another one of me, smiling. Well, of course he does. It means another 5,000 to him. Well, Father, I... I no, I, Madam, don't argue. Good night. Oh, my dear. Yes, Father. I talked to Dr. Fraser. I agree with him. You're not looking very well. But so I'm taking you on a trip. As soon as the portrait's finished. Which I understand will be sometime this week. But Father... But Madden. We're going. Yes, Father. Good night. Good morning, Mr. Curtis. Allow me. Thank you. The portrait will be finished this week? Yes, sir. You've done a fine piece of work. Thank you. We'll miss your visits. I had hoped I'd still be welcome there, Mr. Vanderhoff. Oh, most assuredly. On our return. Oh? You're going away? Yes. Madeline has asked me to take her on a trip. Please don't mention it. It's for her health. She doesn't want it discussed. You understand? Yes. She's waiting for you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Madeline, what is it? I, I, I told you, nothing, nothing. My, it is gloomy this morning. Oh, I'm sorry. I... If I uh, put the music on, may I have another lesson? Please don't, Mr. Curtis. Don't make fun of me. Don't be kind to me. Why not? I would like to be kind and tender to you for the rest of my life. I love you, Madeline. Don't you know that? No. 
No, I don't. I don't know that. Madeline, why are you going away? Why didn't you tell me about it? I, I didn't know it. My father just told me last night. He and the doctor agreed that I should go away for my health, whatever that means. I, I don't know. Didn't you ask him to take you away? I don't want to go away, Peter. I don't want to go away. Just now, your father told me... You asked him to take you. Why would he do that? Why would he say such a thing? I gave up years ago asking my father to take me any place. Last night when he suddenly announced we were going away on a trip, I guess he thought it would make me happy. Now, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go away, and it isn't on account of this either. It, it's just that I... I don't want to go away. Then don't. But I can't just ignore him. I mean, he's my father, and he's been so nice to me, and he knows what's Madeline, right for me, Peter. He... Don't hide from me. But please, I must have my fan. He says I must, I must have it always, because he said that... Madeline, tell me about that scar. I, I... Talk to me about it, please. He said not to... Please, Madeline, tell me. It'll make it easier for both of us to forget it. Please. Oh. Oh, all right. You see, Peter, I'm afraid of the dark. And when I was a little girl, they used to leave a an oil lamp burning in my room at night. And that's what caused the accident. Anyway, one night, it, it fell against the curtains and the oil went all over. In a matter of minutes, the whole room was in flames. My father was out of the house at the time. My mother heard me screaming. And she came running in and she saved my life, but, but she died doing it, Peter. I see. She died saving your life. Yes, she did. Madeline, don't you think it's time you did something more with that life she saved? Oh, Peter. You're the first person that ever made me dream even there could be any kind of a life. Any kind. It needn't be a dream. There's a great deal of love locked up in me. You need great love. Marry me. Please. Oh, you do mean that, don't you, Peter? Yes. You do, don't you? I know you do. I know you do. I know. I love you very much. But the father won't approve, you know. Why do you say that? Why do you say that? Think, Madeline. Just now, you told me your father would never take you anywhere when you asked him to. Yes. Now, suddenly, he's taking you off on a trip. Why? What made him change his mind? I don't know. I don't know, Peter. I don't know. What has happened that would alter his way of thinking? What new has come into your world, Madeline? What? You. He wants to take me away from you. It looks that way. Why? To punish me. To, to punish me, Peter. He blames me for my mother's death. He always has. I've always known it. He should never said so out loud. In this long silence, as he screams at me, you killed her. I didn't, Peter. I swear to you, it wasn't my fault. I couldn't. Mr. Curtis. Oh, Father. Uh, Father. Mr. Curtis. Uh, Leave this house. He just asked me to marry him, Father. Did you hear me, Mr. Curtis? 
I want you to leave my house. Mr. Vanderhoff, your daughter and I want your permission to marry. Please. You're being very cruel, Mr. Curtis. Oh, Father, please listen. Madeline, don't you understand? He's a fortune hunter. No, don't he's Don't you not. see? Father, please. Don't he's argue, not. Madeline. I've warned you before. All right, Father. Peter, will you leave us right now? I want to talk to my father alone. Would you go now, please? Right now. I'll be back this afternoon. Yes, yes. But now, go, please. Please. You foolish child. Don't bother to return, Mr. Curtis. My door will never be open to you again. I can't forgive you for taking advantage of that poor creature. Mr. Vanderhoff, I find your constant piteous references to your daughter disgusting. Get out. So you think he's a fortune hunter, do you, Father? Of course, my dear. Of course. What other reason could he have of being interested in me? My poor child, mean? I don't want to hurt you. How could it be that other people do not find me as, as repulsive as you do? Madam, you'll be unfair. I don't think so. For the first times in our lives, let's be honest with each other. You can't stand the sight of me, can you? Because I remind you of her. At least this side does. But this reminds you of what I caused you to lose, doesn't it? Madam, you're talking nonsense. I'm not. It was a mistake ever let that painter in this house. We were happy here. I should have kept strangers out. Oh. We were happy, Madeline. And we'll be happy again now that he's gone. And he is gone, Madeline. He won't come back. All that remains to erase of this unfortunate incident is your portrait. <laughs> I destroyed it. It wasn't a portrait of me. You never wanted a portrait of me. It was her dress, the way she wore her hair. Nothing of me. You've never wanted anything that was really me, have you, Father? I'm sorry you lost her. But I lost her, too. She gave me my life twice, and now I'm going to try to make something of it. Otherwise, her death would be meaningless to... When Peter comes back this afternoon, and he will, I'm leaving with him. And now I, I'm going upstairs to change out of this costume. He will also reap. It's for the New Testament. Well, good night. And we'll see you next week.